ready, Director? Yes, sir. Ready. Mr. Thompson, you ready? Yes, sir. That's the important thing. We've got to keep you happy. Mayor, ready? He's Mayor, you ready? Already. You want to run? Director McCarty, you're up. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I have a relatively short presentation, so I hope you enjoy it. Relatively it. short is not in your vocabulary. <laughs> I knew it was coming. Well, Alderman and Turner, I'm trying to do better, I promise you. Let's just see. You can time me. You notice, turn your notice she got on. the mute, off, mute button off. Very she had that off right quick, didn't she? Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I guess I get to be last. My plan of buffering myself with the utility seems to be working, so hopefully you're worn out by now. I guess we'll see at the end, won't we? So our uh, makeup, our divisions in the department, we have the accounting division overseen by Ramona Metzger. Uh, we have tax and revenue. Dallas Whitford has given way to Jeff Blazes and Courtney Heinzel as my uh, new revenue, revenue duo. Of course, the budget division, Julie, the illustrious Julie Zogadar, you know, she runs that. We have Amanda Long in purchasing. Uh, Sheila Becker has replaced Patty Connolly in payroll. And Tim Weir, who is here actually in the back, is uh, the head of our fleet services and has been for a number of years. And I think Alderman Donnellan said it best at the beginning when he was talking about staff and John Rogers. These are the unsung heroes that keep the city moving. These are the people who deserve the credit for the accomplishment that we as a city achieve. And they and all their colleagues definitely deserve our gratitude because they are the ones behind the scene making it happen. So I thank them if they're out there watching. Our workforce pretty much flat, down about a half a person in fleet. Like other departments, we have ebbs and flows and we have a few vacancies right now. I'm not gonna run through all these accomplishments, but there are a couple from 21 that I do wanna highlight. I think uh, the, dealing with COVID and working with the departments to implement some cost control measures right up front and right away in consultation with the mayor certainly helped us a lot in getting through FY21 without any cuts in services or layoffs or furloughs. Certainly an achievement for all of us as a city. In accounting, we did a paperless transition to our AP process, and that is that along with streamlining our utility billing has saved us a ton of time and manpower. In fleet, we moved our green initiatives that we started years ago with uh, hybrids and uh, propane vehicles forward by introducing hybrid patrol vehicles into the police department. And we already run a preliminary analysis showing that the hybrid vehicles are cutting about 40% in fuel consumption from our traditional vehicles, which will add up to significant savings for the city of Springfield. We plan to continue to do that as we purchase more vehicles. Uh, Tim and his crew kept rolling all through COVID, uh, got through that relatively unscathed, made sure that our city vehicles stayed out on the streets and services were able to continue uninterrupted. In budget, Julie and her crew, Mallory and Bianca, did a heck of a job uh, digging into the CARES and Cures Act stuff. I mean, I looked at some of it myself and the amount of information and research that went into that is just tremendous. And when it was all said and done, we were able to capture the full $4.8 million that helped us also get through this year, along with the cuts I alluded to earlier. Uh, we transitioned to a new payroll manager and in purchasing, one of the things that I've been trying to personally get in place for eight years now and four different purchasing managers finally happened, and that was electronic bidding. Uh, so kudos to Amanda Long and the other individuals who worked on that, spent a lot of time, and we finally, finally got it done. So our budget in OBM is $83.6 million request. Uh, but of that, corporate is only 12.7 million or about 15%. The majority of it is our self-insurance and capital improvement funds. Speaking of the corporate fund, this is our base operations, just our people for the most part that keep the department running, uh, the corporate requests. So that's your accounting and budget, et cetera. We're, we're, we're requesting a decrease of 3.33% or about $93,000 this year from the FY21 level. Our self-insurance is uh, 
we're requesting a decrease of 825,000 or about 2%. Two, two things I wanna point out are health insurance, which is that HINS stuff there at the top, going up 891,000 or 2.7%. That's pretty good when you consider that the average increase in health insurance every year is between five and 8%. But our committee, our healthcare committee made up of both management and labor representation has done an absolutely superb job in coming up with some innovative things in trying to keep a lid on the growth of our health insurance so that not just city costs, but premiums for the employees stay as, as low as possible. Our workers' comp is the biggest reason for the decline there. When I started here 10 years ago, we saw three consecutive years of about 4.5 to $5 million in workers' comp costs each and every year. We, one of the first things that I know that a group of us attacked was the workers' comp issue, and we attacked it head on, and we attacked it early, came up with some plans. In the last five years, we've averaged half, or about $2.5 million a year. So with that kind of a trend, we made a decision in budget to cut the budget request for workers' comp. Now, we could always have an outlier year, and it could be come in a little bit higher or something, in which case we'll come back to council. But based on the trends that we've seen, the data that we have, we still left a bit of a, quite a bit of cushion in there for that. So we made the decision to reduce that. And that's our uh, reduced request to you this year. Capital improvements, we're looking at about an 8% decline there. Um, nothing really stands out too much. The, what we did this year, and I know we've done it in the past, but really capital improvement or Fund 95 is four different components within there. And we just listed those at the bottom. And I'm not gonna read them, but if anybody has any questions on them, I'd be happy to elaborate on those. Mm -hmm. Fleet. Fleet services, uh, as we have been doing since, I don't know why it's going the wrong way. Can you go back two slides, please, Darlene? It's not working. Two, no, backwards. Oh, well, she questions. wants me to be done. I saw questions. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm going pretty quick. There's only a few more slides, Alderman. Please Put indulge Darlene me. Put Darlene in for a raise. <laughs> <laughs> I can be done in about two minutes. I know. Somebody better do a wellness check on older woman Turner. Okay, great. Fleet services. Uh, we continue to do just really, really good things uh, with fleet, and from a, especially from a budgetary standpoint. If you look at this, uh, our request, again, is down 2.5%, over $100,000. And on top of that, we paid off the fleet garage this past year, so there's no money in the budget for that. And that's not even represented in what you see. That was actually housed in a different fund, in a different area. So... If you look at the history, we started the consolidation, the first full year was back in 2016 with a $5.7 million budget. Almost every year, save for one, which was 21 due to the uh, large increase in tariffs from parts in China, uh, we've, we've asked for a decrease, uh, which is really pretty extraordinary when you consider you rarely see that with any particular program or service going with six, seven consecutive years of, of decrease requests. But the plan that was put in place back when this consolidation one was done is working superbly, working exactly as planned. And that is, and I won't get into the details because that'll keep us here for a long time, but just know that we expected this when we put the plan together six years ago and we set the fleet operation up to do that. And it's working very, very well. Speaking of savings, we have done projections based on what the independent fleets were, what the budgets were pre-consolidation versus what we've been asking for since consolidation. And we project that we've saved the city over $16 million in costs in the last six years, seven years. And this year alone in FY22, we think the savings gap is somewhere in the neighborhood of $3 million in savings. This next, I'm not gonna go through it in its entirety, but this is a nice snapshot of the plan for Fund 95, the infrastructure portion. The line itself represents the outflow of dollars each and every year through 2032. And 2032 is important because that's the year that of the sunset of a quarter percent of the sales tax that was put in place for the big GO bonds that were issued in 14, 15, and 16, if you'll remember. 
Uh, there'll still be money coming in, but a quarter percent or about $4.5 million or whatever it is at that time, maybe $5 million will sunset. And uh, the, the columns below represent the inflow of money from the different sources, video, game, video gaming, hotel, uh, sales tax, et cetera. Um, if anybody has any questions, of course, I'll ask it, but you can just review that on your own. What do we want to do in 22? Well, we have a huge ERP system replacement that has just kicked off, and uh, OBM will be one of the, the leaders of that, along with, uh, my, in fact, Doug Brown, who's still here. Thanks for staying around, Doug. I appreciate that. Uh, Doug and I are the co-sponsors of that program, so we'll be heavily involved in that. Obviously, ERP, all of my staff uh, have a, a pretty significant interest in that and are subject matter experts. And budget, one of the things uh, that Julie and her crew are excited about is we've recently acquired this thing called Municast. It's an Excel-based software. A lot of data, a lot of detail, but the bottom line is it should improve long-term expense and revenue forecasting. Over in Fleet, I already talked about our green initiatives and what we're looking to do. But in general, what I'll say is, as I mentioned before, we are planning to do a significant equipment purchase program this year. I've already got the plan figured out. I already know how we're going to pay for it. We'll bring all that to you in the spring. It will have a boat for the lake, Alderman Redpath. There will be a, a police boat in there. And in purchasing, uh, we're going to continue to try and, and go more paperless there. Uh, the city's pro card program, we're really working on trying to revamp that. Tighter controls, and one of the things we're looking at doing is doing an RFP and potentially getting a new vendor uh, that will help us with, uh, again, control mechanisms, but also potentially taking advantage of rebates that we can't currently take advantage of with our, our current vendor. Uh, there are a lot of cards out there right now that you can get cash back. And unfortunately, the one that we've got, the, the tiers of reaching that are just awfully high for, for what we can achieve. So we'll be looking at that. And then last but not least, we are looking at ways to try and enhance uh, and provide a focus on more opportunities for female and minority-owned businesses here in the city of Springfield. And in fact, the purchasing agent and I were just talking about one such idea uh, only yesterday. That is all I have. Are there any questions? Anyone in the chamber have a question of the director? I just want to say Alderman that's Redpath. the shortest speech he's ever given us over the last six <laughs> years, so <laughs> thank you. You are welcome. Anyone else in the chamber? Anyone on the Zoom call? Alderwoman Conley. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you. Yes, thank you for keeping that one quick, although I will point out you did get to do the budget introduction, too, so we're doubling that your time. That doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just have a quick question about the reductions in workman's comp claims. Sure. How exactly is that achieved? Uh, we can talk about it offline, but there are a lot of different things that were implemented back in, I think it was 2012, it was like an eight-point plan. Now, not all of those were implemented, but several of them were, such as uh, just uh, more aggressively uh, 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 pursuing the, uh, the matters, whether it was in court or through negotiations. Uh, we basically just got more aggressive in investigating and pushing back, uh, we training. Training's been a big thing. We've been enhancing training. I was training. hoping you would say that. <laughs> yep, training. I, I know that's near and dear to your heart. Training has been a, a key component of that. Uh, there's also been some, uh, some safety bonuses and benefits that have been put in place to encourage that. Just a variety of things. But in the end, uh, all of those things working together, working in concert together, have got us to the point where, like you saw in the presentation, we're down to about an average of $2.5 million annually, which uh, is about half of what it was. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other older person on the Zoom call have a question of the director? Alderwoman Turner. So, um, I would, I have a, uh, I, I actually have a question and a comment. Um, earlier, there was an ordinance that was passed, actually on the consent agenda that talked about more minority participation in a variety of things, um, contracts, uh, and a number of things. And so I would really like to know what processes have been implemented in response to that ordinance and are, are any other steps that have been taken to move the um, 
the policies that were in laid out in that in that ordinance to come to fruition. So that's the first question. And the second question, well, the second thing is, I've been here through two mayors, and each of them talk a lot about um, inclusion and um, diversity and uh, how important it is. But then I look at your budget, and I can't imagine that you have a staff that's 86% Caucasian. I, I, I just find that interesting. Um, and like I said, I've been here through two mayors. And you have actually been the budget director since I've been here. And, um, and I just, I find that very interesting that you have a staff that's 86% Caucasian. And then the other one, I would just really like to know what, what steps have been taken to implement uh, some of the um, policies that were lined out in that ordinance. And you don't have to answer now because I'm sure you don't have that answer, but um, you know, I know that, and I know that you're knee deep in the budget right now, but as soon as we conclude uh, passage of the budget, I would really like to have a detailed memo that uh, provides, you know, the, the, the steps policy implementation, all of those things that have happened since that ordinance was passed that move it forward. Because I, I unfortunately, I know that we, we actually passed two ordinances, that one of them was the um, anti-racism ordinance, and then the second one was the, the other one that I'm referencing. And I have not seen any anything come forward in response to either of those ordinances. So I would just really like to know what happened, what's going on, what's what's the next step. So okay. thank you. I'll be happy to get with the purchasing agent on that. And then I do want to comment just quickly on the, the minority hiring that you're talking about. Uh, one of the things that uh, if we were a, if we were a, able to, or if we were going to segregate out the fleet operation from that, you would see a very different story. I'm actually quite proud of the uh, minority hiring track record that we have in the department. Uh, fleet's a bit of a different animal. Um, it's it, that is the majority of where our, our folks are uh, that are Caucasian. Uh, simply, we hire who comes through, who's qualified, and, and, and uh, you know, who wants to do that. And I'll be honest, it's, it's somewhat, when it comes to fleet, it's been somewhat kind of like the police and the fire when it comes to the recruitment. Uh, we just don't see a lot of applicants there. But setting fleet aside, if you were to look at our history in, in OBM and the, and the office staff here at City Hall, I'm actually quite proud of that track record and I'd be happy to discuss with, with you at, at any point that you would like. That, that's, that's great. Um, I, I, and thank you for that explanation, but I do get a bit weary whenever we start talking about, uh, you know, what, what workforces look like, I always hear that word qualified, and um, that that kind of wears me out. But thank you for for that discussion, and uh, and I look forward to seeing what you have to um, bring forward. Thank okay. you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Alderwoman Turner. Anybody else on the call have a question of the director or comment? Okay, I, I have uh, a question, um, a comment, and a request, and I'll start out with the question, director. Uh, there was some discussion the other night about uh, raises uh, for employees and mm -hmm. union and non-union, and of course the raises for uh, employees that are represented by a labor organization are, in, are you know, dic dictated by contract and I assume in the budget. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then the uh, we, we had a considerable discussion about uh, raises for non-union employees. Is there a raise budgeted as, as the budget was submitted by the mayor? Yes. And what is that percentage? There's a, a COLA that's in there. And what is that percentage? I believe it's one and a half. So there is a one and a half percent increase. I'll have to double check that, but I'm almost certain that's what it is. Okay. I just, I, I, I thought that uh, there was one in there. I didn't, I wasn't sure of the amount, so I appreciate that clarification. Right. If you could let everyone know, that would be wonderful. And, and I assume that's the desire of the administration to do that? It depends the what the financial picture is. I think they've gone, when's the last time uh, they've received a raise? Uh, would have been September of, what are we in, 21, 19? 19. 19. And when have the union raises come in? 
uh, annually yep. when the contracts so, are up. So it's, uh, we're going to weigh that into the consideration as well as uh, what the financial picture looks like. Usually it's on the tail end of the year. Thank you for that. And if you could just verify the percentage for us, that would be, I'd appreciate that. Yep. And then one comment, Director I, I, and Mayor, and uh, thank you for presenting. I know we, we've had a unique uh, year, needless to say. Everybody knows that. Hard year. Uh, and uh, I just want to thank you all for uh, the process that you put forward, the budget you put forward, the explanations, the answering the questions when we have them. And I know there'll be plenty more. Um, and, and that said, I want to thank your uh, staff, Julie Zolgadar and her team that uh, you know, work with the directors and, and, and coordinating the information and putting the budget together. They're wonderful and they do a great job and uh, I just can't thank them enough. I know not everybody could be here tonight because of the, the COVID situation, but I know some of them are on and I hope they, they hear that because I know that I speak for everybody. We really appreciate that as far as the staff goes. And then finally, if you could, because I, I think I misspoke earlier when we were describing the process, you could just briefly outline the, what the rest of the budget process is so the public and the council is aware. And then I want to just, uh, before we even close down, I just want to thank everybody uh, uh, for, the pro for your participation, your good questions, your comments, and, and your dedication. Director. Well, thank you for all those comments, and I can tell you the staff, they are watching at home. They're on Zoom and, and ready to answer any questions in case I can't. Um, so they will appreciate those comments and thank you for making them. The rest of the process, as I alluded to earlier, is we're, we're giving the council members two weeks to continue to ask questions of us, work with us, provide comments, and eventually we're asking for your amendments by two weeks from tomorrow. So 19th, I think it is maybe, that sounds about right. And then the following Tuesday, which is normally, which is committee of the whole, we are planning a, uh, a special, meeting, special council meeting prior to committee of the whole. At that special meeting, we'll have the public hearing. Okay. And then we would discuss amendments, and then eventually you would move to pass the budget as amended if the council is so inclined. Thank you. And that, that information obviously is on the city's website, anybody that's interested and didn't get all that written down. Right. Okay. And of course, there are two meetings, as you mentioned earlier, uh, where folks could always come and sign up to speak if maybe they can't come to the public hearing or whatever. Certainly, you'll be discussing it in committee of the whole next week, I think it is, and then we'll have a council meeting where we won't really be discussing it at that point, but certainly folks could sign up to, to speak on it. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Anybody else have anything for Alder the good Woman of the Turner. order? Alderwoman Turner. Um. I really just want to say thank you to um, both you and Alderman Conley. You guys did a fantastic job of chairing these budget hearings in the midst of a pandemic with, you know, half of, half the people on Zoom, half the people in the chambers. And, and I know that is very difficult and, and, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes we can't all hear what's going on at the same time. And it seems like we're over talking each other, but we really don't know when other people are finished. And it just becomes very difficult uh, trying to navigate all that. So I do want to give both of you huge kudos because you did a fantastic job. And I'm really proud to call you my colleagues. Well, thank you. Thank you. If, if I could just say, I think the Irish coalition showed itself there you go. this time. <laughs> Anyone else have any comments for the good of the order? Okay, hearing none, everybody have a good, safe evening and see you next week. Thank you all. Thank you. Huh? Oh, yeah, that's why I'm What the heck? <laughs> The other thing was, uh, the other thing was,